Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So this week I want to speak to you about a quote I heard. And it's funny because I love Einstein's quotes. And I might have heard this before, but for some reason it's never really stuck in my mind. And hearing it again had just it really grounded me. It's funny how some things, they sort of sit in your head and you have an understanding of them, but it takes another repetition or a couple of repetitions or even more than that sometimes for it to really sink deeply into, well, at least into my consciousness anyway. And the quote that I've been pondering and thinking about and living for the last few weeks is, it's not a quote so much, well, it is a quote, but it's a question. And the question is, do you believe that we live in a friendly universe or a hostile universe? And it's a really important quote to think about because how you believe or your answer to that question denotes your whole life, how you interact with life, how you interact with people, how you interact with circumstances and things that come at you from life. And it got me sort of looking around and thinking about people that I know in my life not just my immediate family, but my friends, my colleagues, people I interact with, people I read about. And I would say that 95% of all the people I have contact with, people that I've read in books, all sorts of people, I would say 95% of those people, at least, if not more, deep down believe we live in a hostile universe. Even if they come across or if they try to convince you that they're actually positive people. Deep, deep down, how they react to things, um, how they come across, how they speak, comes from a deep fear that we live in a hostile universe. If you believe that you live in a hostile universe, it affects the very energy of your being because you're constantly looking for the next thing to go wrong. You're suspicious, you're defensive, you're closed off. Energetically, you're withdrawn and protective of yourself because you believe that around the next corner or in the next year or something is going to come along to disturb your peace, to take something away from you, to hurt you in some way. And I'd like to give you an example of this. So I know that vaccinations are something that um, people tend to feel very polarised about. And I'm not trying to have a discussion about vaccinations. I'm just using it because it's a really good example for people to sort of engage with because people generally fall into one of two camps. Either they're pro-vaccinations or they're anti-vaccinations. And the people that fall into those two camps tend to be particularly charged around those two particular topics. When you feel this about it, when you fall into one of those two different topics, those two different camps, it creates a polarization. It creates an us and them, a me and them. And you'll find that as you speak to people about this topic, you'll either be vehemently in agreement with people and in your agreement with those people, you'll be looking for reasons to justify your point of view. Um, you'll be sharing stories of when it all went wrong or what people are trying to do to you through the vaccines. And in that, there's a self-righteous energy, a, a sort of a, an excited kind of defiant energy, a res sort of a pushing against and trying to assert kind of energy. And and I'm just assuming in this argument, by the way, that you're anti-vaccinations, but it applies exactly the same to the other side as well. Um, and I'm, I don't know why I'm assuming that. It's just where my thoughts have gone at this moment. But if you speak to people who believe you should have vaccinations and you're against vaccinations, you'll find quite a hostile reception. You'll find that they don't agree with you, that um, you make them frightened, you, you rock their world, you... Um, challenge their thoughts of what everyone should be doing to keep themselves safe. And in that there'll be conflict, there'll be, um, you might say things or they might say things that might hurt you or you might hurt them. And the whole thing escalates and creates a very bad feeling around both things. And the reason I'm sharing this is because your belief in a hostile universe, because only a hostile universe would make you believe that taking them would be good or not taking them would be good. Because ultimately, if you believed in a friendly universe, whatever your decision would be in your greatest interests. And just to reiterate, 
I'm not trying to open up a discussion about whether you should take vaccinations or not. That's not the purpose of this example. The purpose of this example is to demonstrate that when deep down you believe in a hostile universe, how that belief then facilitates your behaviour that creates your experience of a hostile universe. Just to get you to see whether or not you believe in a friendly or a hostile universe, I'm going to ask you some questions and you can answer very honestly to yourself to see where you lie on these things. Do you believe that the leader of your country is doing the very best that they can? Do you believe or how do you feel about global warming? What do you feel and think about vaccinations? And what are your thoughts and feelings about the coronavirus and the pandemic that we're currently going through and any lockdowns that you've had to experience due to this pandemic? pandemic? And then finally, what are your thoughts and feelings about the people that have answered the opposite to those questions that I've answered, asked. <laughs> and if you feel emotionally charged with any of those questions, or if you feel emotionally charged with something or somebody who stands in opposition to what you believe in, all of that comes from a belief that you believe in a hostile universe. Because if you didn't believe in a hostile universe, you wouldn't get emotionally charged and in resistance to things that are happening in our world. If you believed that we lived in a friendly universe, even when things look like they're going wrong, deep down you'd believe that eventually they would turn out for the good, even if right then and there you can't see how that could possibly be. You would have a deep faith that it would all be working out for the greater good in some way. And there's a beautiful quote, and I'm not exactly sure who said it. It's generally attributed to John Lennon, but I think originally it was Fernando Sabino who actually said it. And the quote is, everything will be okay in the end, and if it's not okay, it's not the end. And I love it because whenever everything seems to completely go wrong, I try and remind myself of that quote. And just to stay in open curiosity to see how something will play out and un unfold in life. There's a lovely story about a Chinese man who lived on a hill with his only son. And I can't remember it exactly, so I might get it wrong. I'll try and find the link and put it in the show notes below. But he was there with his horses and unfortunately the horse ran away. And the villagers were in commiseration with him, trying to say, oh, it's so awful. I feel so sorry that your only horse has run away. It's so dreadful. And the old man simply said that he, he wouldn't commit to it being good or bad. He simply said it will be what it will be. And I, I, that's not a direct quote, so, but it's along those lines. A little while later, the horse returned and with him, he brought a whole load of other horses. And the villagers were all excited and they ran up to him and said, oh, this is so wonderful, this is fantastic, you're so lucky, you must be so happy. And the old man said, um, it is neither good or bad, it will be what it will be. And anyway, in the course of training these new horses, his son fell off and broke his leg. And again, the, the villagers all commiserated and wanted to give him their, their sort of sympathies. And again, he said, it is neither good nor bad, it is what it is, it will be what it will be. And a little while later, apparently, the army, there was some war somewhere else in the country and people came recruiting for young people to join the army and to fight in the war. But because his son had a broken leg, he was unable to join the army. And the villagers came and they were sort of trying to share in his joy. And again, he said, it's neither good nor bad. It will be what it will be. And I kind of think that if we lived more like that in life, if we got less caught up with the highs and less pulled down by the lows, but treated life with curiosity, that we'd be able to live in much more peace and acceptance and joy and bliss and, and love and happiness, because we wouldn't constantly seesawing between the two. And I'm sharing this not because you should or should not take action in life. That is not what I'm trying to say. I think action can be taken, but it's more about where that action comes from. Is the action coming from fear, from anger, from pain, from hurt, from suspicion, from jealousy? Or is the, or is the action coming from love, from trust, from faith? And there's a lovely thing about Mother Teresa and how she was asked to join an anti-war rally. And she said, I will never attend an anti-war rally, but if you have a peace rally, please invite me or something to those lines. I can't remember the exact quote. 
And I think that's what I'm trying to get across. It's not about not taking action. It's not about trying to do good in the world, um, but it's about who you're being whilst you're doing that. So going back to the vaccination example that I gave at the beginning of this conversation, do you, do you come at it from a defensive point that if people don't get vaccinated, they're putting other people at jeopardy? Or do you come at it from the point of view that um, people are going to force you to be vaccinated and they're going to pressure you and manipulate you and um, give you no other option? Or do you have whatever belief you have and believe that you can make whatever choices you make and that those choices will be good for you, whatever they are? There is no right and wrong that everybody should adhere to, but you're free to make the choice that you want to and that life will support that choice for you. And even if it doesn't, you'll still be okay. And, and that's really the subtlety, is where does that lie? And it's funny just talking about it, because I'm very sensitive to energy. I can feel the, the anger and the hurt with the first two options. But with the second one, there's a peace, there's a tranquility, there's an acceptance and trust um, that's so open. And it's, um, it's how that energy flows through you in life as well that creates your experience of life. And the last one I shared with you is very much about trusting life. And this is really what I want to sort of talk about, because trust is a choice. You can choose to trust. You might look back on your life and feel that there are very few examples of where you have... You might look back on life and see that there are very few examples in your life of where you've been able to trust life. You might look back on your life and feel that there's a lot of pain, a lot of being let down, a lot of hurt and anger. But I'd like to put to you that that comes because you never trusted life, you were never brought up to trust life. So I'd like to ask you, what does a life of mistrust and fear look like to you? And what does a life of trusting life look like to you? And which one would you rather live? Because if it's a choice, which I know it is, <laughs> which one do you choose to start living? To me, life is a lot like electricity although you don't actually have to pay for it in the same way as you do electricity. But you can choose to plug into it or not. And you can choose to be suspicious of it or not. And life and electricity, both, they don't really have any judgments on what you do or how you do it. They don't get offended. Life doesn't feel hurt or ignored or vengeful. It simply is just life, just like electricity is just electricity. And you have got a choice on how you approach it, whether you trust it or whether you don't. It won't feel resentment or offended if you choose not to trust it. The only person that will ever lose out if you choose not to trust life is you. Because a life of fear and anger and hurt and mistrust is really no life at all. And next week, I'm going to dive in a little deeper on how you can build up that trust if you've never had it before, how you can develop it, how you can notice if you're being mistrustful and what you can do about it. I hope you have a really fabulous week ahead of you. And if you want to access any more of my resources, I've got free courses and in-depth courses on how to understand what it means to be a human being and things that explore everything that I talk about in this podcast. And you can find all of that on my website and I'll put links to that in the show notes below, as I will for everything I've spoken about on this podcast and blog and YouTube video. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.